Hey guys, welcome back. So uh, I'm making this video directly after making the video about finding the volume of a 3D object in ZBrush or Fusion 360. And the thing that I was referring to in that video that I had been making were these costume feet for like a little penguin. Um, I don't know exactly where these are gonna go yet. And I'm not really supposed to uh, talk about all this, where what this is for. So and it's generic foot is all I'm gonna give you right now. Um, but they're made out of flexible foam, so they bend, and on the inside there's like a, a cavity here. You can see how it's kind of got a double cutout. Now this is made so that whichever foot the person has it on, their shoe would fit here. We'll pat out the rest, and then on the opposite foot, this foot would fit here. So their foot is essentially straightforward, but the, the angle of the feet is kind of turned out like this. So that is, uh, that was the plan. So to make these, I actually modeled the foot in ZBrush. It was a really quick process to make. It's very simple and it's totally symmetrical. So I modeled the foot in ZBrush and I created the mold in ZBrush. So the actual mold is a 3D printed hard, just a shell mold, really thin, quick print. This only took, uh, I don't know, it took like probably 15 hours, I think, to print this whole thing on the Creality CR10 S5. It's printed all in one piece. That's why it's got these weird fins. I didn't put any support material. I just built it into the mold. This actually ended up being really handy in the casting process too, which I wasn't even considering. So basically printed it on in like this and that was good. And then I printed a core, which is here. And I printed the core with a uh, infill pattern that was basically infill where needed, which means that these edges, it only had infill kind of in the center. And in retrospect, I'd wish I'd filled the whole thing with infill because the edges got sort of weak. Now see it's wrapped with tape. Now what I did is I wrapped it with tape and then I epoxied the outside of the tape. Um, this kind of doesn't even matter in the long run, I'll tell you why in a second. But basically this mold has a, a key here and a key here. So the core fits inside like this and um, the whole shebang is attached to a board, which is here. This is all the gook. So it basically screws down. There's matching holes that line up with this. This screws down, and then I have access to the inside of the mold through the bottom, which is why you can see the little pour spout there, at the right there on the tip. So I could pour in the flexible foam and slosh it around. And if everything goes well, it expands and it, it's awesome. Now, most of these, the shapes came out really good. The first foam I used was too soft. The next one I used was really heavy, but it skinned very well. So I was trying to do a blend of the harder, better skinning foam on the outside and the softer foam on the inside, but I was having trouble. So the last two I did were just made out of the, the heavy foam. So these, this foot weighs probably twice as much as this one, but it looks really, really good and unified. But that's sort of besides the point. Anyway, I just wanted to show that you can make a mold like this. And if you're casting a soft part, you don't need silicone. You just produce the parts like this. Um, and that volume calculator that I mentioned in the previous video was very, very handy for getting, figuring out the, the overall foam. There's barely any waste. So I have a little flashing, but almost nothing left in the cup and uh, almost exact match for the amount of foam. Now to release this mold so that the pieces would come out, I basically took the inside and I I coated it with uh, one layer of XTC 3D epoxy, which I don't really like that much, but for this it's very simple, so it was fine to have some left over. So I did a coat of that, gave it a quick sand just to make sure it was smooth, and then I sprayed an automotive 2K clear coat in here. The, the same stuff that I would use to paint the top of like over when I do chrome, like C3PO or if I need a really, really gloss color, I'll print this auto clear coat. It's glassy smooth. Um, I painted that on the inside, so it's really shiny. So some of the first castings I have are actually, um, the surface is actually shiny because of the way I'd, I'd waxed it really, really nice. Um, but they were harder to release out of the mold and they just didn't, they didn't look as good as this like kind of like a flatter color. It looks better in my opinion. So what I ended up doing is using um, this, ugh, this high temperature release wax, which is called, what is this one called? Uh, Partle high temp wax. It, this is, I um, got this at Revkin here in San Fernando Valley. This is typically used if you're making like a, 
like a hard on hard part like a fiberglass or epoxy based master with a, a mold with a gel coat kind of surface like a tooling gel coat and then you would wax it make sure it's really really <laughs> really prepped it so you'd wax it and you'd probably use like a PVA release and then you would lay up a hard part in there so there's no silicone so you have to make sure that there's draft edges etc this is you know like if you're manufacturing toys it's things you have to consider um, but yeah no silicone I and mean, that's what that kind of wax is for so it worked really well in here after I started using that there's no problems releasing the molds and then for the core what I was doing is wrapping this in a uh, cheap grocery bag so wrap up the whole core and then basically tuck the bag under and tape it on the bottom and uh, bolt it in and push it down and that's why on the insides you see this one still has the bag in there um, when I take the, the piece out I can just rip the bag open pull the core out and then the, the rest of the, the casting would come out of the mold very easily because you know like I said it's flexible so you can just you know bend it pop it out uh, really handy so if you're making a flexible part or if you're making silicone pieces like if you want to make a silicone mask you could print a hard mold and then you know do the silicone in here now I didn't do any reinforcement to the outside of this mold because I figured I was only gonna make like three or four castings I ended up making ten because I had so many uh, issues getting the foam to do what I really wanted it to do so still ten castings still held up fine uh, if I knew I was gonna make so many I probably would have done like an epoxy fiberglass coating on the outside just to stiffen up the mold I ended up not needing it but it wouldn't have hurt so something to consider anyway figured i'd share that uh hopefully i can share it i don't know maybe i can't post this ever i'll find out um maybe in a, a month or so so eh, before i ramble too much more i'm gonna get out of here thank you guys for stopping by and i will see you soon